Who would have thought that a global pandemic might make people act a little crazy? Okay, a little crazy is to be expected, right? We're only human. In 1986, the Human League pointed that out to us. So I ask you, is buying all the most squeezable Charmin by the pallet nuts? How about cornering the Lysol market in your neighborhood? Or hoarding all the eggs? Seriously, people, there were a few months there, I couldn't find eggs. It was the longest I ever went in my life without scrambled eggs. And let's just say, if I had had, had the money at the time, I would have went to Costco and bought all the bacon just out of spite or maybe some breakfast bartering, but I digress. Where is this video going, you ask? All the above had me thinking about the psychology of hoarding. So armed with an inquisitive mind, the Google, and plenty of personal experiences, I found out more and thought I'd share all of my findings with you. First, I wanna point out that I feel I was raised by hoarders. Everyone else in my neighborhood, thought of my parents as hoarders, so they probably were hoarders. And by the way, after the research for this video, there is no doubt in my mind they were hoarders. But secondly, as an appraiser and an auctioneer for almost 20 years, I've seen some amazing hoards, that's for sure. And third, I've also, and this is the thing that always had me thinking, I there were people that considered themselves hoarders or a relative hoarders that I didn't think met the criteria in my brain or what I consider to be a hoarder in my experience. This is what had me really wanting to learn more. So exactly, what is hoarding? Has it ever been measured like by psychologists? Uh, and are there, are there levels or degrees of hoarding? These are all the things I really wanted to learn, you know, because, and, and what causes it? Can it be cured? How about, uh, is it hereditary? In my case it wasn't, but I have found that it's actually known to be hereditary. So let's get the, to the bottom of this together in this video. And if you like this kind of thing, please, before you go, subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. You know why? Because I'm hoarding subscribers. Let's dive in right now. So first, what is hoarding? Okay, hoarding is a known disorder. Someone diagnosed with hoarding disorder will actually experience great levels of stress at the mere thought of getting rid of something. If you have ever witnessed it or tried to help someone downsize with this affliction, you will see their deep-seated and perceived need to save almost everything, regardless of the actual value. I had a lady that had an entire two-car garage filled with plastic bags, and I'm not kidding. Plastic bags, floor to ceiling, two cars, that's it. Plastic bags, nothing else. Anyway, it's personal, psychological, and it runs deep. Almost every episode of the popular TV show Hoarders, I have seen you see the same psychology play out repeatedly. Honestly, it reminds me of home in my childhood, but it's I know it's not normal. Further, I'm sure it's why I became an auctioneer and appraiser. It was to help those people dealing with a loved one downsizing. I found it odd how the hoarder will not listen to family, but generally listens to a third party. Not the people that love them, but a complete stranger. My parents were like that and so were most of my hoarder clients. Just another curious human nature thing and perhaps excellent for another blog. So moving on, has this disorder ever been measured by psychologists? I really wanted to know. I had seen some psychologists work with people before on this, but I didn't know if there was like a study on it. So I was thrilled to find out, yes. Generally, when we think of hoarders, we go straight to the crazies in our imagination. That neighbor, a relative, or a memory of the worst episode of Hoarders Buried Alive we ever saw. But enter the National Study Group of Compulsive Disorganization, and they created a clutter hoarding scale with actual levels of hoarding. I would have loved to have been part of this study. Let me summarize their findings for you. The five levels of hoarding and its recognition. So, level one, this is the least severe. They are just a few signs here, like the lack of clutter might hide the condition, but the individual will have trouble throwing things away. It might be very clean and organized, but they're keeping things they don't need. This might be an excessive shopper that buys things they don't need, excessive uh, being the key, so don't freak out. The home cues are reportedly light clutter, no noticeable odors, all doors and stairways are accessible, but may show some past animal waste throughout the house. Animals, the pets, are great cues. 
you can see where this is heading, right? Okay, level two. A level two hoarder may avoid having guests in their home or express some embarrassment. They have anxiety or depression and withdrawal from social interaction, not wanting people over to visit their home. The home cues here are maybe a blocked exit, an appliance not working, have a malfunctioning HVAC system. The level of hoarding exhibits additional clutter, two or more junk rooms, uh, narrow pathways in the home. Generally, the home will have a light pet odor, signs of animal waste on the floor, evidence maybe of some rod rodents overflowing garbage cans, dirty food prep surfaces. On a side note, and while I was reading uh, some of my notes, I just wanted to add that as I researched more, I began to have a touch of anxiety because my parents' level had not yet been reached. So I wanted to know, you know, what enabler level that would place my sister and I on. And I'm sure anyway, there's levels of that too. So I'll continue. Level three, a level three hoarder may have poor personal hygiene, weight issues due to an unhealthy diet. They may become dismissive or angry when their lifestyle is in question, when, especially when friends or loved ones ask them, you know, let's call it lashing out. That's a good way to put it. So uh, the home cues here are, there's visible clutter outside the home. The usual indoor items, televisions, furniture are now found outside their home. Home appliances have been broken for months and an area of the house may have light structural damage. Generally, level threes have a number of pets and show signs of neglect. Um, there's typically evidence of rodents and other signs, fleas, spiders, cobwebs, paths, you know, other home characteristics may include uh, an unusual bathroom, unusable that is, uh, a bedroom you can't get to, small amounts of hazardous substance or spills, piles of dirty clothes, blocked outlets, tangled cords, overflowing garbage cans, odors throughout. If my sister is watching this, she might be freaking out because she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, that, that all sounds familiar. All right. Level four, a level four hoarder will have poor hygiene, declining mental health, and may express grandiose plans or nostalgic memories. The home cues here are noticeably noticeable mold, mildew, structural damage, odors, sewage buildup, a number of pets exceeds regulations. Uh, there are, I don't think they had regulations in our town, so we couldn't exceed them, but we had a lot of pets. Other examples will be aged canned goods, no visible clean dishes or utensils, beds with lice or other bugs, no sheets, covers, excessive cobwebs, spiders, bats, and other rodents. You know, I did tell you this blog was hitting home for me, and honestly, you know, as I reached level five, I just knew I would see signs of five in my childhood, but this was coming, becoming really weird and uh, soul searching exercise. I really am gonna write a book about all of it anyway. So I just wanted to answer a quirky question of why people bought all the toilet paper and now I end up with this. So yes, crazy. Anyway, level five, a level five hoarder often cannot live at the home any longer. We used to say built their way out of the house, meaning they had so much stuff packed in the house they couldn't even get in their house. Um, I've seen that. Luckily, I didn't live that. We could actually get in two thirds of the house. So anyway, um, I, I know a lot of these folks though. A good friend of mine that will probably read this has a father that had bought a house for all his stuff for his new hoard and was already building that one out. So my parents were super close to this, but you know, if they had the money, they would have been there because they would have bought enough stuff to throw their, but anyway, that's a whole nother story too. Level fives may even stay at a friend or family member's house. They might have waste and bottles and buckets and remains inside their other home. At this level of hoarding, they'll have noticeable symptoms of depression. Along with all the other levels and signs and home cues with the additional clutter, like clutter-filled bathrooms, an unusable kitchen, noticeable human feces, rotting foods on surfaces, you know, a non-working refrigerator. We had one of those in the basement that had food in it that was like 15 years old that had not been on. Anyway, that's the story. Here I was pleased not to have checked all of the level five boxes in my upbringing, but mind you, I was pretty darn close. 
I thought I'd use a yellow highlighter to mark all these, the farmhouse level five horde characteristics, but I think I'll save that for my therapist. Anyway, I'll need one after, after working on this video. But as long as I was on a roll, I forged on. So what causes this? Leave it to the Mayo Clinic to tell me it's not clear what causes hoarding. Genetics, brain functioning, stressful life events are all being studied as possible causes, but that didn't help. But I did find something interesting that it starts around the age of 11 to 15 and it gets worse with age. And of course, it's more common in older adults. I used to think, I used to think it was my dad because he was a child of the depression and I've heard that's a common factor where it's like he who dies with the most stuff because they were raised in poverty and then they have some means and stuff is really important. So they never want to run out of stuff. I've heard that before. So let me get to the hereditary. So yes, it uh, apparently it is. I've uncovered it. It can be hereditary. You know, history is a known factor of this compulsion. And a stressful life event and the use of hoarding is used for coping. The death of a loved one, a divorce, uh, losing possessions in a fire has shown to be a cause. I've seen empty nesters become hoarders, but I question if it's the free space that they just exposed or is it something that they formed early in life? I surmise it's a combination of all of it. We are complex creatures, that's for sure. So can it be cured? Of course. I wanted to know if there's a cure for it. No. However, as with most mental health conditions, getting treatment early can prevent the hoarding from becoming worse. So I guess I figured out my toilet paper Lysol egg hoarders scenario. They're just doomsday preppers and not true hoarders. Sure, you could point to the stressor of the pandemic exposing the depression and some underlying anxiety disorder or obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. These are common in hoarders, but all the other signs just point to them getting ready for the zombie apocalypse. And by no means, according to The Walking Dead, zombies don't use toilet paper, uh, Lysol won't protect you from them, and rotting eggs will only attract them. So actually, I'm not sure about the eggs. I just made that up. Anyway, I'm going to do something odd and close on a serious note. Yeah, not me, but here it goes. If you think you're a hoarder, get some help. Hoarding does have serious consequences for you and your loved ones. Typically, there is the all too common financial strain of needless and extreme shopping, the strained dysfunctional relationship it causes, and the possible loss of housing due to eviction or even condemnation. It is also known that the children of hoarders experience depression and other mental conditions due to their living situation. Adolescents and teenagers will avoid social situations that involve inviting peers into their lives because of embarrassment. I can tell you about that one. Even being raised like this, it, they know the kids know it's not normal. Some children become resentful. Hoarding or living in a situation often leads to substance abuse. It's also a common coping mechanism for living with this disorder. My hope is this video has been helpful. If you ever have any questions about things like this or want to talk about things like this, shoot me an email. I've lived through this and I really, like I said, I've helped a lot of people in the same situation deal with a parent that was a hoarder or themselves.